Chapter 2 All Tied Up The inside of the van was so dark Saucy couldn't see. All she could feel was the cold metal floor of the van on her face as this woman held her head down, trying to tie her up while sitting on her. Saucy tried to struggle as much as possible, but couldn't see a thing. Saucy screamed, Get the fuck off me. Let me go. Something hit her hard across the face. Saucy could taste the blood as she tried to hold her head up. You don't talk to me that way, a crackly woman's voice yelled back. She punched Saucy again, hard. Her jaw felt torn. Saucy started to grab at anything she could. She wrapped her hand up in the woman's hair and pulled. The woman screamed as Saucy pulled her face towards her own and started hitting her back. She couldn't rear her punch back far enough because of the bed of the van, but Saucy was still hitting the woman with all she had. God damn it, Robert, get back here and help, the woman yelled flailing about. A thud came from behind Satsuki's head, causing the van to lower, then spring back just a bit. Robert's foot barely missed Satsuki's hair. He grabbed her arms and flipped her over onto her stomach, causing the woman to fall against the wall of the van. He ripped Satsuki's arm up behind her back. She screamed from the pain, but was quickly silenced with some sort of cloth shoved in her mouth. Chrissy, grab the rope, Robert yelled. Chrissy jumped on top of her with the rope and wrapped Satsuki's arm up, tying them together. Saucy started to kick her legs, but Robert pulled her arms up, hurting her even more. Chrissy jumped on her legs and used the same rope wrapping it around them, and Saucy's muffled screams didn't slow Chrissy down one bit. The ties connected down Saucy's back, between her arms and legs. She couldn't do anything. Tears streamed down her face and a smile broke through the dark. A crackly, concerned voice whispered, Shh, my love, don't cry. Chrissy wiped away her tears. Her fingers smelt of cigarettes. It's all going to be okay now, I promise, Chrissy said. They both climbed into the front of the van and Robert started up the engine. Satsuki could see the moon coming through the windows of the double doors in the back of the van. The trees went by fast as they were going the opposite way of Satsuki's home, and the fireflies signaled their goodbyes. She was trembling and tears continued streaming down Satsuki's face, collecting in a puddle on the cold metal bed of the van. She looked up to see the dashboard lights, lighting up both of the captors' faces. The cloth in her mouth was wet and tasted awful, almost causing her to throw up. What was I going to do? How could I possibly get out of here? Where were they taking me? All of these questions flooded Saucy's head, making her cry even more, and causing fear to strike her from behind like a lightning bolt. Every question leading up to the biggest one. Was I going to die? <laughs> Suddenly, a loud vibration from Saucy's back pocket rattled against the metal bed, and just like that, she had a way out. It was her phone. Saucy rolled as fast as she could, hoping they wouldn't hear the phone. Chrissy turned back towards her and jumped in the back. Chrissy, what are you doing? Robert asked, looking back curiously. Shh, didn't you hear that? Chrissy said as she leapt on top of her. Saucy tried to scream no, but only muffled cries could be heard. She's a teenager, Robert. Don't you think she has a phone? Chrissy asked sarcastically. Robert's jaw tightened from frustration. Oh, shit. Did she use it? While tied up? Chrissy ripped Saucy's phone out of her pocket and looked to see who was calling. The screen lit up Chrissy's face. From the way the phone vibrated, Saski knew someone was calling, but she wasn't sure who it could be. Chrissy's face became stern as she looked back at her. Chrissy stepped back into the front seat and showed Robert. See, Robert? I told you. Look who's calling her. Robert looked at the phone. Saski tried to look in the reflection of Robert's glasses, but he only glanced long enough to read the caller. Saski could hear Chrissy disassembling the phone, then rolling down the window. Chrissy started tossing pieces out. She finally spit the piece of cloth out of her mouth. Who was it? She screamed. Chrissy turned back towards Saski. Shut up! She screamed again. Who was it, goddammit? Chrissy spun back even faster, almost leaning completely over her seat. It was somebody who doesn't matter anymore. We're your family now. Understand? Chrissy spun back. Saski started to plead to them. Please don't kill me. I didn't do anything, and I don't have anything to give you. Chrissy laughed and turned back again, sharing a chuckle with Robert. We're not going to kill you. Not this early. Robert's voice cut in. Unless you're not a good girl. Are you a good girl, Satsuki? Turning her body to see them better, she asked. How do you know my name? Robert looked at her through the rear view. If you don't shut up, I'll have to come back there, he threatened. Chrissy's voice interrupted. Yeah, don't you worry, baby. Everything is going to be okay. Wait till we get home. Satsuki's eyes started watering again. The ropes were so tight it hurt her wrist. She couldn't get out of them at all, and fear was starting to numb her. Feeling like a statue, Saucy started to look around for anything that could help now that her phone was gone. It was hard to see anything. She tried to feel around, but felt nothing but the cold metal. 
Her will slowly started decreasing, and she pleaded for this all to change. How could this have happened? Why did I agree to go with him? I should have run as fast as I could from him right when I saw him. Was this where I was going to die? These two fucking freaks were going to be how I died? These thoughts caused Sasuke to panic. She kept looking for anything to help at all. A sliver of hope. Or just a chance. And there it was. In the pitch black of the back of the van, the light from the moon shined down on a figure on the other side leaning behind Robert's seat. It was her backpack. The waterfall from her face stopped immediately. She looked up at these monsters sitting in the front, both of them looking forward. Chrissy grabbed Robert's hand and held it. Looking at him, she smiled, and then looked out the passenger window. Sasuke watched them for a few minutes trying to find the right moment to start edging her way towards the backpack. She didn't know where they were going, so if she planned on getting out, she had to act now. Sasuke pulled her knees as close to her chest as she could, and then slid them back trying to scoot towards the bag. Slowly back and forth, she scooted inch by inch, getting closer to her escape. Sasuke was halfway there, while stretching her body in pain, trying to be as quiet as possible. Closer and closer, she got to the bag. Sasuke! The voice made her stop dead in her tracks as fear struck her again. She looked up at them as fast as possible. Aren't you excited for your new home? Chrissy asked while keeping her stare out of the passenger window. Sasuke sighed. Chrissy hadn't noticed that she was moving yet. Trying to play along with Chrissy's delusion, Sasuke said, I'm just tired. How long till we get there? Chrissy giggled. We'll be there soon. Just go ahead and take a nap. She said while looking at the dash and reached towards the radio. How about some music? She turned the radio on to some sort of talk show, then to some metal music. As she scanned through the stations and her attention was elsewhere, Sotsky kept edging towards the bag. An old-timey country song scratched its way through the speakers. Chrissy jumped in her seat. I love this song. Is this okay, Sotsky? She asked. She looked back at Sotsky just as she stopped moving. This is great. Thanks. I'm just going to go to sleep. She stuttered her way through as she laid there looking up at Chrissy. Chrissy's smile reflected the lights from the dash. Good, Chrissy said. She turned back to the passenger window. The old country song filled the van, so Sasuke didn't worry as much about being heard. She just had to worry about being seen. She kept wiggling like a worm sliding all the way to the bag. A few of Robert's coughs and throat clears and Chrissy's random noises and light mumbling to herself made Sasuke stop a few times. But after ten minutes, she finally reached it. She unzipped the bag quietly and started feeling around. She felt her hand towel and book. Down past them was a binder and a jacket and some headphones. Till she felt it. A box she kept pencils and supplies in. Sasuke pulled at the latch of the box, opening it up, but everything dumped out into the bottom of her bag. She stretched her arms out as far as she could from behind her back. A pencil. A pen. A marker. Scissors. Sasuke pulled the scissors out of her bag and started cutting at the rope behind her back, all while watching the two in the front the whole time. They continued looking forward but rocking side to side along to the song playing through the radio. The piece of rope connecting her wrist to her ankles cut easily. She pulled the rope from her wrist and rolled to her back. She sat up and started cutting the rope from her ankles. With every snip of the scissors, the sound made her feel closer and closer to freedom. Sasuke tossed all the rope aside and crawled towards the side door. You dumb bitch! A scream came from behind her, and then a hit across the back of her head, before darkness. Sasuke's sight was fuzzy, but she could tell she was being carried. Fluorescent lights shined down one by one as they passed over her. Robert stopped and pulled out his keys. Sasuke couldn't see them, but she could hear them jingling. Laying over his shoulder was extremely comfortable, and her headache from being hit wasn't helping. Robert unlocked the door and stepped through the doorway. He laid Sasuke down on the ground and started digging in his pocket. Come on, Robert. You can't lay the new girl in her bed? The voice came through, pestering Robert. Robert tossed some bandages on the ground beside her and a small package with two pills inside. You're bleeding. His voice lingered as he walked out of the room, shut the door, and locked it. A leak from above dripped down on Sasuke's face. She tried to push herself up, but her arms gave out, making her fall flat on her face. Instead, Sasuke rolled out of the way of the leak and looked up at where it was coming from. Pipes traveled through one side of the room to the other. She heard footsteps going upstairs, then a door shut, and locks being turned. Hey, sunshine. You okay? The voice from before came from the right. 
Sasuke turned her head to the side, but everything was still quite blurry, and it wasn't really bright in the room. She could only see a figure standing off to the side. Are you with them? Are you here to kill me? Sasuke asked, but mumbled through most of it. A laugh came from the figure, and then another from the other side of the room. Honey, we're in the same boat, the girl said. Sasuke sat up and looked around. Her vision was starting to clear up, but could only see things that were close, like a bed, a toilet, the door. She looked back towards the figure. A girl stood there, looking back at Sasuke. The girl had wavy auburn hair that was slightly above shoulder length. She had a cut-up black band t-shirt on and ripped skinny jeans, also black. She was about Sasuke's age and had a smirk that wasn't as off-putting as it should be in a place like this. You weren't wrong. He could have at least put me in bed, Sasuke said while trying to stand. The girl laughed. You should probably take those pills. They're for the headache, said a voice from the other side of the room. Sasuke looked over to see a young guy also standing, looking in at her, like she was a caged animal in a zoo. Phil, you actually trust those? The girl asked. I mean, do we have a choice? Phil responded. The girl shrugged. Sasuke picked up the pills and bandages and crawled up onto the bed. If you don't mind me asking, which one hit you? The girl asked curiously. Sasuke set the bandages aside and looked around. There was a sink just on the other side of the toilet. She hobbled over to the sink and turned the knob for cold water. Scooping handfuls of water into her mouth, Sasuke didn't realize how thirsty she was. She popped both pills out of their package and into her hand. She tossed them into her mouth and swallowed. Chrissy. She hit me. Sasuke hobbled back to the bed and sat down. Chrissy, huh? Yeah. She can be... eccentric, the girl said. Sasuke was actually able to see now. The bed was just a rusty metal bed frame with springs and a mattress that was only two inches thick. Off to the left of her bed was the toilet and sink, but it looked like they had been stripped of certain things, so they couldn't use pieces to get out or as weapons. This was everything in her room except the door in front of her. Are we in cages? Sasuke asked. Phil let out a slight laugh. We try to keep from calling them that, he said. The girl nodded. There's very few things we get to control, and what we call these are one of them. Sasuke turned to look at each of the rooms. They were clear, but didn't seem like glass. What are they made of? she asked. Phil pointed towards each wall. They're made of plexiglass. He pointed at the rusty metal piece drilled into the clear door of Satsi's room. That's where your food will come in. For right now, that's all you need to know. You should get some rest, the girl said. Phil walked away from the glass and laid down in his bed. Satsi turned around to the girl. She winked and laid down in her bed. Satsi was left there, looking around, in a basement, as the fluorescent lights turned out and everything went dark. Drops of water tediously ticked on the cold ground. It felt like 40 degrees and Sasuke still had the clothes she was wearing, even her flannel. She untied the flannel from her waist and pushed her arms through the sleeves, trying to stay warm before laying down. Someone's snore sounded like thunder, and the ceiling above them creaked. She climbed under the covers, even though there was no way in hell she was going to sleep. The sound of locks being undone came from the stairway. Sasuke leaned up, but everyone else jumped out and slid under the beds in hiding. She didn't know what to do. New girl, get the fuck under your bed! The girl yelled out from under hers. Sasuke jumped up and rolled underneath the bed. She faced towards the girl. She was scared. But when Sasuke saw how scared the girl was, she became petrified. The door bounced open. It was quiet for just a second, and then footsteps made the stairs creak from every step down. Then another pair right behind the first. They turned the corner, and Sasuke could see. It was Chrissy and Robert. They were carrying a basket with a towel over it. Robert made his way passing the other two doors but stopped at Sasuke's door and slid open the tiny window. From the basket, he pulled out a little cup of pudding and set it on the ledge. It was Sasuke's first couple of hours being there, and she had become very hungry. The pudding was banana chocolate. She could tell because her friend Karen would give Sasuke the same kind at lunch. Karen didn't like banana, but for Sasuke, they were two of her favorite flavors. Robert stepped away from her door and started passing out plates of food from the basket and setting them on the ledges of the other doors. Robert and Chrissy were looking in at the girl under her bed, but she just kept staring at Sasuke, shaking her head. While they weren't paying attention to Sasuke, she edged her way towards the door, crawling across the ground like a predator to prey. She came up close to the door, investigating the pudding. A scream came from the girl in the next cell. Don't eat it! Don't do it! Robert turned towards Sasuke, then back to the girl. He set down the basket and started unlocking the girl's door. Robert turned around to a table, leaving the door open and grabbed something off the wooden work table. The girl slid out from under her bed and stood up. 
She stared at Sasuke with anger and fear in her eyes. Then she ran towards the open door. But Robert turned around and shot her in the neck and cheek with the prongs from his stun gun. The loud electric sound echoed through the basement, clicking and clacking with flashes of light. But none of this was as horrifying as the girl's screams of pain while she shook on the floor. Robert let go of the trigger, and the shocking stopped. He walked out of her cell and back towards Sasuke's. A faint, don't, from the girl. And again, Robert pulled the trigger and shocked the girl even longer than before. Please, stop! Sasuke screamed. Robert turned to her. Then eat it, he said, and pointed at the pudding. Seeing the girl shaking on the ground was horrifying, and Sasuke couldn't take her being hurt anymore. Chrissy laid her arm on Robert's shoulder. Just give her a regular plate, Robert. Let it go, Chrissy said, and Robert let off the trigger. He pulled on the cords from the stun gun, ripping the prongs out of the girl, like ripping a hook from a fish's mouth. We shouldn't take it easy on Sasuke after last night, Chrissy, Robert demanded. Chrissy walked past him to the front of Satsuki's door and grabbed the dessert sitting on the ledge. Do you want a plate? Chrissy asked. Satsuki looked down. She couldn't look Chrissy in the face. Chrissy smiled and leaned down to the basket and pulled out a plate of waffles and bacon with a cup of tea. She set the plate on the ledge. Eat your breakfast, she demanded. Satsuki looked at the plate. She was so hungry before. But after everything she had seen, she wasn't sure she would ever have her appetite again. Satsuki looked back at the girl. The girl was already looking at Satsuki, crying, but her mouth kept trying to say something. Satsuki could barely make it out. The girl whispered, It's okay. Don't worry. Chrissy turned away from Satsuki's door and started walking back towards the girl's room. Satsuki couldn't take her eyes off the girl as her words kept replaying in her head. Chrissy stepped into the girl's room. Be careful, Chrissy. She's been a troublemaker lately, Robert cautioned. Chrissy knelt closer to the girl's face and brushed her hair back. We'll just have to fix that, won't we, Miss Tadley? Chrissy said before grabbing Tadley's face and squished her cheeks together, prying her mouth open. Chrissy shoved the banana chocolate dessert into Tadley's mouth and held her mouth closed. Tadley struggled as much as she could, but the stun gun left her weak. You're gonna eat this damn dessert, aren't you, Tadley? Chrissy asked. Chrissy grabbed Tadley's nose, giving her no way to breathe. Tadley started flopping around. Sasuke ran to the glass and started banging as hard as she could. Stop it! You'll kill her! Sasuke screamed. Robert loaded up another charge on the stun gun and stared her down. As Tally screamed under Chrissy's hand and clawed at her, finally she swallowed. Chrissy sat back and wiped her hands off on the towel from the basket. You'll be asleep soon, baby girl, she said, as she swept Tally's hair out of her face. Chrissy laughed and stood up. Robert, grab her, she directed. Robert put the stun gun on the table and picked Tally up. What are you doing? Where are you taking her? Saucy yelled, but they ignored her. She felt so lost. She couldn't understand what was happening. It all happened so fast. Robert started walking towards the stairs. He smiled and whispered, Tonight has been a good night. Chrissy grabbed the basket and both of them walked back upstairs carrying Tadley away with them. Chrissy turned to us from the bottom of the stairs and she leaned on the handrail. Now Tadley's going to be preoccupied for a while, all right? She asked rhetorically. Saucy glared at her. She couldn't handle how she felt. Running up to the glass and pounding her fist on it, she screamed, What the fuck are you doing to her? Chrissy giggled and turned to Phil. Philip, you better teach that bitch how to be respectful before I have Robert come back. Chrissy met Sasuke's glare with a smile. We wouldn't want that, would we, Sasuke? Chrissy turned back and walked up the stairs, slamming the door and locking it behind her. The sound of the locks echoed through the basement while Sasuke stared at the bottom of the stairs. She was stunned from everything that had just happened. A sound came from her left, and she glanced over. Phil started sliding out from under his bed and crawled over to the ledge in his door, where his plate sat. He grabbed his plate and went back to his bed, setting down. He opened his book and started reading and eating a little piece at a time. Oh, shit, Phil said as he stood back up and grabbed the cup of tea he forgot on the ledge. There was another guy in a cage on the other side of Phillips. The guy climbed out from under his bed, grabbed everything off the ledge, set it on the ground, picked up a cigarette, and one match off his tray. Damn it, Phil, they gave me a camel. He scoffed and started to yell. I can't at least get a decent cigarette while I'm here. He started poking around at his waffles, annoyed about the wrong brand of cigarette. Saucy couldn't believe what she was seeing. A girl was just force-fed pudding and dragged out of here against her will, and these two act as if nothing happened. Like they're at a goddamn hotel. She could feel her face contort into full disbelief. Are you two fucking blind? She exclaimed. 
Tally was just pulled out of here and you two didn't do shit. You're just sitting there eating your waffles. And you, you, you're over there complaining about the wrong fucking cigarette? She was enraged. Philip set down his book in a snooty way and looked up at Sosky from his bed. No, don't worry, Phil. I got this one. The man said as he slid his match across the ground and lit his cigarette. Phil turned, waved his hand, and said, By all means. Saucy looked back at the guy. He had a teenager's mustache, shaggy dark hair, and he was dressed in a leather jacket and leather pants with a white t-shirt underneath. The mystery man stood to his feet and walked over to the glass. Look, honey, we're all in this place. We're all in these rooms. So exactly what were we supposed to do? She looked down at Philip. He was already looking at her with a blank expression. What the fuck are you looking at? She could tell she was getting aggressive. Philip giggled and said, Nothing. Nothing. And the guy started snapping his fingers at her. Hey, back over here. What were we supposed to do? What you did? How far did that get you? He asked. He had a point. Looking down at the ground, Sasuke wondered how much she actually helped. If at all. Look, I know exactly how you feel. I really do. But be grateful she spoke up, he said. Sasuke's head snapped back up, face burning. How can you say that? She asked. He lost his smirk. His whole body position changed, and he took another drag off his cigarette. Exhaling, he said, If she had let you eat that pudding, you would be up there. Tally knew that she couldn't let the new girl find out what happens upstairs so early. What really sucks, Sasuke? That's your name, right? It really sucks because I'm next to take your place, whenever that may be. So do me a favor. When you do finally find out what happens upstairs, you'll want to thank me. But don't. Just let me complain about whatever the fuck I want, okay? He walked to his toilet and tossed in his cigarette, then went back to his food. Philip wasn't looking nearly as snooty as he was before. Look, Sotsky, I know it's hard, but we're here too. You're not doing this alone, and neither is she, Philip said. Philip pulled open his book and started reading again. Sotsky just looked around, unable to actually do anything. She grabbed her plate and drink and sat down on the bed. The waffles looked so good and the smell of bacon was making her stomach grumble. No matter how hungry she was, or how delicious the food looked, she still had questions running through her head. It was like getting the hint of an answer, but four more questions along with it. She began pushing her food around. There was no silverware, so she just had to use her hands. The questions were bubbling up, until she finally couldn't hold it, and she asked the one thing weighing most on her mind. Phil, what happens upstairs? What are they doing to Tadley? The question blurted out like vomit. Phil nearly dropped his book and looked at the guy in the cage next to him. I think you should take this one, Phil. They were playing a verbal hot potato. Sasuke could tell Phil really felt trapped. No pun intended. Phil cleared his throat but kept his head down and confessed. Look, Sasuke, we can't know for sure. I know that's hard to understand or even take as an answer, but it's different every time. At least, it was for me, he explained. He was completely right but that didn't make it easy for the girl to take. What do you mean, different? Is she coming back? She asked worriedly. Phil sighed. Sasuke, I'm not going to tell you everything I've been through. I can't. But I'll show you just a fraction of what's going on. He laid down the book and got up off his creaky bed. Phil, don't. The guy in the other cell pleaded, sounding as worried as Sasuke was. Phil stood in the middle of his room and turned around with his back towards her. He took a few deep breaths, then started to take his shirt off. The shirt fell slowly out of his hands. Saucy jumped to her feet and walked to the glass that was separating them. She covered her mouth, stifling a gasp, her eyes filling with tears as she saw every scar stretching from one side of his back to the other. They covered his back top to bottom. Saucy couldn't take her eyes off his torn back, her body shaking. No. 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 Falling from her lips in waves. Saucy. Phil leaned down and grabbed his shirt, turning back to her. We honestly have no idea what will happen to Tadley. I don't want to make you worry, but you need to know. Phil slid his shirt on and came to the glass. Five days ago, a different girl was in your cell. She was taken upstairs, and she never came back. It had been a few hours. The sound of locks clanking echoed through the basement. Footsteps came booming down the stairs. Robert was coming down the stairs with a basket from breakfast, but he had blood up his shirt and splattered all over his face and glasses. What the fuck? Saucy said from where she lay. The others were already under their beds. What? Robert said before looking down at the shirt. Oh, yeah. 
Tally's giving us hell, he said, and laughed as he dropped the plates on the ledge of each door. She hasn't done anything, Sasuke yelled. And she won't ever again, Robert said, smiling. Sasuke pulled her knees to her chest and started to cry, while Robert laughed and made his way back upstairs. I don't think he'll kill her. Tally's his favorite, Phil said quietly. How can you be sure? Sasuke asked. I can't, but you need to eat. You haven't eaten anything all day, he said worriedly. Sasuke walked over to the plate and picked it up. She returned to her bed and sat down with her food and tea. It was some sort of pasta. She didn't know the name, but she started eating it quickly, since she had thrown away her breakfast. In about three minutes, she had gotten half of her pasta down and all of the bread. She had already run out of the tea. Sasuke felt starved. As she got down all the food only using her hands, she felt like an animal. She was only focusing on the food, so she wouldn't worry about Tadley. She finished the plate and set it to the side of the bed on top of the breakfast plate. She turned to the others, but they were only picking at their food. Confused, she asked. Why are you two only picking at it? Pasta not your thing? Phil glanced over at her, and his eyes grew wide when he saw her plate. Oh, fuck. Alex, look at this. Phil came to stand against the glass between Sasuke and himself, but turned back towards Alex, worried. Alex stood and walked to Phil's glass trying to see. His eyes grew just as big as Phil's once he saw the empty plate. They were both looking at each other like they did something wrong. What's wrong? I was starving. I didn't think I ate my food that fast. Sasuke became worried. Alex put his hands on his head, scratching. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, you did. You ate it way too fast. He paced back and forth. Sasuke stood up. What's the big deal? What are you freaking out about? But before she could finish her sentence, she began to feel dizzy. Phil turned around. Sasuke, just lay down, okay? Just lay down. She thought they were overreacting. But when she tried to move to the bed, the dizziness quickly got worse. She started to get really scared. What? What's going on, guys? She asked. Phil knelt down and started directing. Don't worry, Sasuke. It's okay. Everything is okay. She began to lose her balance, and her vision started getting fuzzy. Sasuke, just listen to me. Try to lean your body so you fall on your bed. Can you do that? She could barely hear him. She couldn't trust any of her senses, and she was still scared as hell. She took a deep breath and started rocking back and forth. She was getting enough force to throw herself at the bed. She counted in her head. One. Two. Three. Her legs gave out. She collapsed right against her bed. She tried to pull herself up, but slid off, pulling the covers with her. Damn it, Sasuke, are you okay? Phil asked, concerned, but Sasuke couldn't speak. Her mouth felt limp like the rest of her body. Her vision went darker and darker as she pulled the covers over her and drifted off. The sounds of locks clanking around woke Sasuke. She could hear the others sliding under their beds, so she sat up. Rubbing her eyes, she looked up at the square basement window across the room and saw the moonlight shining through it. She looked back to the door and saw Robert stepping off the stairs, with Tadley hanging over his shoulder. Sasuke jumped to her feet but stood too fast. Her head was spinning as she fell back, sitting down on her bed. Robert passed by her room. His keys jingled, but she could hear something else. Looking up, everything was still blurry. Sasuke was still trying to determine what the sound was. She could tell she wasn't in the right state of mind, considering she was more worried about a misplaced sound. A light shined into her eye. She looked to see where it was coming from. Tally's ring reflected the moonlight, but it only led Sasuke to where the sound was coming from. Tally was limp, lying over Robert's shoulder, and unconscious as blood dripped from her hand onto the floor. It was the misplaced sound, the offbeat dripping sound that caught Sasuke's attention. Robert unlocked Tadley's door. Sasuke tried to run, but stumbled to the glass. She yelled, What have you done to her? Right as the words fell from her lips, Tadley was thrown down on the concrete floor. It wasn't just her hand covered in blood. So was her back, legs, and face. Almost her whole body was covered, but her clothes were collecting most of it. Sasuke could tell it was too much. Without saying a word, Robert locked Tadley's room and started to walk away. Sasuke followed him. Please! Please help her! She pleaded. She wanted to help the wounded girl somehow. She turned back to Tadley and there it was, the bandages they had given Sasuke before, laying at the end of her bed. Sasuke banged on her door trying to get his attention. Robert! Wait! Look, please just use this. Please use this. She stumbled to the end of her bed and grabbed the bandages, then back to the slot and laid them on the ledge. Robert stopped and turned around. He picked them up, then looked back at her. You would do that? For her? Robert asked, looking puzzled. 
Tears streamed down Sasuke's face as she nodded. Yes, of course. Just please do this, please. Robert looked over at Tadley, then back down at the bandages. Honestly, she deserved it. Robert tossed the bandages back through the slot. Sasuke picked them up and tried to hand them to him through the hole. She needed him to take these. She needed him to help Tadley. The son of a bitch who did all of this. She needed his help now. Please, Robert, for me? Robert looked in on her, through the glass, and smiled. He pulled his keys back out and started unlocking her door. Sasuke pulled her arm out of the hole and slid backwards. Robert stepped inside and stepped towards her. She raised the bandages up to him. Thank you, Robert. Thank you so much, she said. She wiped her face off with her sleeve. Robert knelt down. Sasuke, this is all your fault. His words shocked her. No matter how mad she was, it was still all her fault Tadley was taken upstairs. She was trying to protect her. Now this time, it was her trying to return the favor. Robert raised his arm and backhanded her across the face. Sasuke's head bounced off the concrete and her body went limp. He grabbed her by the collar of her shirt, pulled her up and smacked her again before dropping her on the ground. She didn't care how bad she was being hurt. It didn't matter. She fell to her side, cradling the unused bandages, still begging him to help Tadley. Robert walked back out of Sasuke's room and locked the door. He made his way back to the stairs, whistling, but he stopped halfway. He took one step back and leaned down so he could see her. She stared back at him as his smile grew even bigger. Sasuke, I can't wait till I get a taste of you. As Robert left back up the stairs, Sasuke thought she would never get out of here. They could just come in and hurt them at any time, and there was nothing they could do about it but watch. A taste? What did that even mean? She crawled over to Tadley's glass, looking in on her. Sasuke was holding back tears and wiping blood off her lip when Phil's voice broke through. Sasuke, leave her alone. She's been through enough. Let her rest. He walked over to the glass. Tally will be okay, Sasuke. She turned back to him. How do you know that? Sasuke, they wouldn't have brought her back if she wasn't going to be okay. I know it's hard, but you have to let her get some rest. Phil walked back to his bed and laid back down. She's back. Isn't that good? Alex said, trying to be encouraging, but it only made Sasuke feel worse. She felt frozen and could barely think. The day before, she was hanging out with Brittany and Karen, and then today, she was locked in a cage being fed like a dog, waiting to see what's next. Needing something to do, she started to inspect Tadley. Her pants were halfway down, and her shirt was torn on the back, with bloodstains pouring through. Saucy's eyes followed her body. She could see where they bound Tadley's wrist and ankles. Bruises were developing. A feeling was passing all through Saucy's body like a flood. She recognized it almost immediately, because she had felt it many times before. Helplessness. It was suffocating. The lights turned out and the moonlight shined from the cutout square, reflecting off of Tally's blood back to Sasuke's eyes. She spun around, holding her mouth closed, as she started to cry. All she could do was cry. She couldn't stop. She hadn't stopped crying for months, even before this, and her body was as tired of it as she was. Sasuke stood up and walked back to her bed, scooting back till she was leaning against the bricks. She crossed her legs and felt tears collect on her pants. She looked up at the cutout square, watching the outside, but something was there. In an instance, the tears faded away. She wasn't crying anymore, nor did she feel like crying. A new feeling burned inside Satsuki, something she hadn't felt in her entire life. She was filled with rage. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna get us all out of here. I swear. She said to the fireflies, lighting up outside of the small basement window. They reminded her how she felt walking through the woods, and she was going to feel that way again. The fireflies seemed to cheer her on with each flash of their light, and for a second, she felt free. The fireflies are beautiful, aren't they? I've been here so many times, but I can't get over all the strange things you have in this world. A voice crept from the dark.